Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our latest vodcast. And this is going to be on a challenging topic. I'm going to speak about sclerosing mesenteritis, which is often a very difficult diagnosis, and it can be confused with many things, particularly the differential diagnosis is sclerosing mesenteritis versus a carcinoid tumor. But it could be other possibilities. So let's look at some basic facts. Sclerosing mesenteritis is an idiopathic disorder with chronic nonspecific inflammation, fat necrosis, and fibrosis. It usually involves the small bowel mesentery, but can involve the colonic mesocolon, or both of them together. It went by many different names in the past, mesenteric paniculitis, retractile mesenteritis, mesenteric lipodystrophy, or lipogranuloma of the mesentery, but these days, we're set on sclerosing mesenteritis. We once wrote an article, this is 20 years ago, Sheila Sheth, sclerosing mesenteritis is a rare inflammatory condition of unknown cause that affects the root of the mesentery. The mesenteric fat is involved with a variable amount of inflammation, necrosis, and fibrosis. On CT, mesenteric paniculitis, which was the name that would go back and forth, appears as an area of focal increased attenuation within the mesenteric fat, surrounded by a pseudocapsule, and has been described as a misty mesentery. So you can see way back when this sclerosing mesenteritis, mesenteric paniculitis. Now, we do have an entity, mesenteric paniculitis. In that situation, patient may present with abdominal pain, this haziness in the mesentery, there's no significant mass effect. It kind of looks like a misty mesentery as the term. Sclerosing mesenteritis is more of a solid mass, and up to 70% of the time, there's going to be calcification. It's more common in men, average age about 60, and abdominal pain is the most common presentation. Weight loss, distension, FUO, or other presentations. So you can see why it's challenging, because it often is in the clinical presentation, does this patient have a malignancy? Now, in terms of CT, what do we see? Retraction and shortening of the small bowel mesentery. You can see partial or complete small bowel obstruction, which makes you indeed worry about some type of neoplasm. You can see well-defined or ill-defined mesenteric mass with soft tissue or mixed fat and soft tissue attenuation. It may encase the mesenteric vessels with preservation of a fatty cholera around the vessels. Now, this is important because when you think about carcinoid tumor, it really encases and occludes the vessel more commonly, and sclerosing mesenteritis encases, maybe stretches, but the vessels are still patent. But I'll tell you, that's not always the case. And punctate or coarse calcifications may be seen. They may be indeed very impressive and happen in about two-thirds or so of the time. If you think about a differential diagnosis, we talk about carcinoid tumor. We talk about metastasis to the mesentery, lymphoma, soft tissue sarcomas, or Weber Christian disease. And I think the real differential diagnosis is going to be carcinoid tumor. In that same article by Sheth, we made the point that when you try to distinguish carcinoids versus sclerosing mesenteritis, one of the important things to look for is the aggressiveness of the encasement of uh, carcinoid tumors. Also, it's very important with carcinoid tumors to look at the small bowel carefully. Perhaps you'll see not only the mesenteric mass, but a small bowel tumor. Obviously, sclerosing mesenteritis does not have an associated small bowel tumor present. So let's look at some examples. Here's an excellent case. There's a mass in the root of the mesentery. There's dilated small bowel, extensive calcifications, and very, very coarse calcifications. So in looking at this, your differential is sclerosing mesenteritis versus a carcinoid tumor, really impressive calcifications, and Again, the issue in terms of clinical presentation is going to be this dilated small bowel loops. So you're kind of stuck in this case because all of these masses, all of these linear lines, I am worried, surely could this be a carcinoid tumor? I don't see a mass in the small bowel. But again, a very difficult case. Retraction. This was sclerosing mesenteritis, just a very, very impressive example. 
So again, dense calcification, small bowel obstruction, stretching and adherence of the mesentery. This is a very difficult example. Another case, coarse calcifications, mass in the root of the mesentery. Again, you're thinking carcinoid, you're thinking sclerosis mesenteritis. If the patient had had lymphoma and was treated, that would be a possibility. I guess in theory, you could consider TB. You can see the infiltration, the encasement around the vessels. You can see it very nicely from the MIP view and the sagittal view. And again, on the 3D maps, the vessels are all patent. There's the calcification. So one helpful thing with a carcinoid, the vessels might be encased, narrowed, and literally occluded. With sclerosis mesenteritis, they're typically patent, but stretched. And again, very coarse calcification. Now just to remind people that up to 70% of carcinoid tumors in the root of the mesentery are gonna be calcified as well. So the calcification in and of itself is not gonna be all that helpful. Though I do think like in the prior case, that very, very coarse calcification, very dense, probably pushes me more to sclerosing mesenteritis. Just a very, very difficult diagnosis. So more images, and that was a nice case of sclerosing mesenteritis. Okay, another patient with abdominal pain. Very similar to the prior case. Very dense calcifications, very coarse. This was sclerosis mesenteritis as well. Here you don't see the mass infiltrating quite as much. You don't see bowel obstruction, but it's a dense mass in the mesentery. Again, you might throw in tuberculosis, treated lymphoma, some strange granulomatous disease. Here is nice volume rendering, showing you the calcified mass, showing you the vessels. Another example, patient presenting with small bowel obstruction. Very similar to the first case. You have that adhesions of the small bowel, markedly dilated. Again, very similar to that first case. Can be very challenging. Now, what about this case? Here you begin with an infiltrating tumor in the mesentery. So again, my differential, lymphoma, carcinoid, sclerosis mesenteritis. And you could see how it's stretching down the root of the mesentery, really infiltrating down in the mesentery, nicely shown. And then as you look at some more images, the vessels are stretched, but they're all patent. Again, if it was carcinoid tumor, I would expect the vessels to be more narrowed and occluded, though one would agree that some of these distal branches do look very stretched and very irregular. So I think it's a tough call here. I think in sclerosis mesenteritis versus a carcinoid tumor, you see the mass. There's a large mass present. There's some involvement of the SMV. And I have to admit, I am very much worried about a carcinoid tumor. Here's some more images on the venous phase showing you the dilated collateral vessels. When I see this appearance of collateral vessels, the occlusion of the SMV, all of these collaterals and infiltration, I will admit that's when I'm gonna favor a carcinoid tumor. Here it is a little bit more into the mesentery, very nicely shown on the cinematic rendering. Again, showing you on the volume rendering. Again, some days you can show the images really nicely, but I'm still stuck in that differential diagnosis. Uh, you could buy up these, these lesions. There's some thought perhaps doing a dotatate scan. If it's positive, then you know you're dealing with a neuroendocrine tumor. If it's not positive, then it's more likely sclerosing mesenteritis. But just a very nice example as I show you a few more images and the infiltration, and this was a was sclerosis mesenteritis, just a really good example. Now what about this case? There's a mass in the mesentery, it's partially calcified, you can see it, it's to the right of midline, there's some changes in the mesentery, and changes in bowel, you see that SMA loop is encased, you see how that looks there? That encasement to me, is the finding that's most helpful in carcinoid. Now this piece here, just this image alone, I could sell you on carcinoid, but I also can sell you on sclerosing mesenteritis. But the way the vessel looks here, 
That makes me think more of carcinoid tumor. You can see on the MIP imaging, venous phase, the mass. You can see how you have all of these stretched vessels, the occlusion of the SMV, and all of these collaterals. That's a more typical appearance of carcinoid, but again, think back a few moments ago, the great overlap with sclerosing mesenteritis. Another example of carcinoid. Here's a mass, occlusion of the SMV, coarse calcifications, not as extensive as the calcifications in some of those cases of sclerosing mesenteritis I showed you. We can see some of the collateral vessels because of the involvement of the SMV. And you can see it very nicely, this was a carcinoid tumor. Now just to be complete, what else could we think about? I mentioned lymphoma, large mass root of the mesentery, vessels are stretched. I think the thing that helps you with lymphoma, it's a soft tissue mass with displacement, though there is some encasement of vessels, but with lymphoma there's no calcification. The only time you'll see calcification, and it's more commonly reported than seen, is if patients have had therapy, like radiation therapy, then you could see calcification. Yes, it's true that in under 30% of cases of sclerosis mesenteritis, as well as carcinoma, you may not see calcifications, but the relationship to the vessels is the other finding that allows you to make the diagnosis of lymphoma. Very nicely seen here on the volume rendered images as well. Now, another thing in terms of mesenteric masses, here's a case I saw not that long ago, large mesenteric mass. It's so smooth and round, I guess it could be lymphoma. It's surely not going to be carcinoid. It's surely not going to be sclerosis mesenteritis. It could be a large gist tumor. That's a good possibility. This ended up being a desmoid tumor, desmoid fibromatosis. So large mesenteric masses, there's a wide differential but the reaction, the involvement of vessels, the changes around bowel and root of the mesentery, you're not going to confuse um, a desmoid tumor with any of those other possibilities. So again, you have a good differential for mesenteric masses, but you can be specific, though I'll admit the challenge of carcinoid versus sclerosing mesenteritis is still there. And here nicely on the cinematic rendered view, you see stretching of the vessels, but not encasement. So let's just summarize again. With sclerosis mesenteritis, there's retraction and shortening of the mesentery. You can see partial or complete small bowel obstruction. I showed you some examples. You can see a well or ill-defined mesenteric mass with soft tissue or mixed fat and soft tissue attenuation. It can encase mesenteric vessels with preservation of the fatty collar around the vessels called the fat ring sign. That's opposed to thinking about a carcinoid tumor. And again, punctate or coarse calcifications may be seen. We talked about the differential diagnosis, carcinoid tumor at the top of the list, METS, lymphoma, soft tissue sarcomas, and Weber Christian disease, which is exceedingly rare. And with that, I hope this helps you next time you're puzzled by one of those big mesenteric masses. And with that, I wish everybody a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.